there are some GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD actually in stock, not the greatest price. Today we're going to talk about some of them, if you happen to see it, should you buy it, and if not, why not, and what else should you be looking for? And something that's priced pretty good is a Windows CD key. Today's video sponsor is going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. Very simple process. You can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key. Using my coupon code CC20, you're going to get 30% off. That's a pretty cheap CD key. They work without any issues. I've used them on various builds. The activation process is very simple. You just go through their site. You put in my code. Then you're going to go to checkout. You can use something like PayPal. Afterwards, they're going to give you the CD key and then easily enough you go into your Windows setting and you go into activation put in your CD key and voila all of a sudden your Windows is going to be activated and remember if you do upgrade to Windows 11 you're also going to be able to transfer that CD key without any problem it just does it pretty much automatically as soon as you install Windows 11 so remember to check out our sponsor I'm going to leave the link below in the description and remember to use code CC20 for a nice discount all right so let's talk about some GPUs there are some that you're going to see in stock I know the running joke has been that nothing's available everything sells out in seconds not necessarily true now there are some gpus that because of the prices going up so high and they're not nearly as attractive as some of the other options that are on the market they have certainly stayed in stock considerably longer and it's very easy to find but the question is if you need a gpu and you happen to see these should you buy it we're going to talk about the ones that are really in stock all the time as well as some that are more occasionally in stock something that you perhaps might want some Something like a 3080 Ti that does show up more often now than a 3080. Should you spend that amount if you want a GPU of that caliber? So let's get started with sort of the more entry level GPUs that we have now available. 6500 XT don't buy it. That's pretty easy. It's not really a great GPU by any stretch of the imagination. There are other things on the market that are actually better, um, especially from a few years ago. You can get older GPUs probably for a similar price that perform the same or a little bit better. It's basically like a laptop GPU within a discrete GPU, so definitely better options there. Some people have made the case that at least it's something that's available. I've seen it myself for around like $269 to the $300 range, but I think it's probably worth worth it to wait a little longer, you know, maybe save up a little bit more, try to get something with a little more grunt, because or else I think you're going to outlast that GPU very, very quickly. The competition was supposed to be the RTX 3050 from NVIDIA, but the problem here is that GPU, I've seen it myself, nearly $500 for an Asus model when I went into Micro Center the other day. Most of the other models are in the $400 range. That is far from a budget $200 entry level GPU. So the question is, if you run into one of these 3050 GPUs, should you buy it? It's not a terrible GPU by any means. At least it gives you some satisfactory gaming performance, unlike the 6500 XT. Now, if it's really devoid of any other GPUs within three or four hundred dollars, like I would much rather, you know, upgrade a little more if you can get a 3060 for like five hundred dollars or 530 or something like that, which I've seen them for. But the 3060 may be harder to track down in stock. You may be, have to be a little bit more lucky than you would be with the 3050, which might be a little less desirable, meaning it may stay in stock definitely a little bit more. So I would definitely try to up your budget a little bit. That's going to be the story of the day. You are forced to up your budget nearly on every level because the prices have themselves just gone really, really crazy high and you can't find the exact GPU that you want. So unfortunately, that's going to be the story. So if you need a 3050 around that budget, there's nothing else in the $400 range that you can find either on the used market or you need a new GPU, then perhaps it's not really all that bad of an option. It does game pretty well at 1080p. Certainly, it's not a terrible GPU by any means, but if you can step up to that next level, which is the 3060, certainly would be you know well recommended. You're going to get a little bit more longevity out of a GPU like that. Not to mention the usual 3060 Ti and 3070, but those are great GPUs that I think a lot of people like anyway. Today we're talking about some GPUs that pop up in stock more often and why you should buy them or not. Certainly recently you're going to be a lot more likely to see a 3070 Ti or a 3080 Ti than their counterpart the 3070 or 3080. Now, 3070 Ti, you have really no way around it. Most of them are going to be around $900 to that $1,100 range if they're a little bit more premium, like an Asus Strix. Now, 
Is it worth it at that level? I mean, the 3070 Ti is not quite a 3080, but it performs pretty nicely. It's going to be pretty close in a lot of games to a 3080. Pricing wise, certainly a few hundred dollars cheaper than that 3080. Now, the 3070 Ti definitely is not that much better than a 3070 if you consider the 3070 originally was $499, but those MSRPs do not exist anymore, really. So you're looking at six to seven hundred dollars for a regular 3070 or 900 to a thousand for a Ti. Now, the big kicker here is I think you're going to be a lot more likely to find a 3070 Ti in stock, be it on a website that ships through the country. Country. Maybe some European countries might be able to see that a little bit easier. And of course, in the you know Best Buys and sometimes you know micro centers often have those 3070 Ti's as well. Now the story is similar with the 3080 Ti. It's a great gaming GPU. Don't get me wrong. Probably much more preferable than a 3090 if, if all you're doing is gaming. It's typically going to be cheaper than a 3090, but it doesn't mean it's a cheap GPU. It's actually really expensive. Now, if you can find the Founder's Edition on a Best Buy drop, that's a completely different scenario. It's going to be hard to find that one. That's 1200 bucks. Great value, you can say, for what the market is. Nobody really thinks it's worth that much more over the original 3080, 700 bucks. But once again, our market is really upside down. So for a 3080 Ti, I would say your best, most realistic value proposition here, if you find one, is going to be the EVGA, you know, the 4 to 1 3, something like that. EVGA tends to be better priced, around $1,400 range better than most of the other 3080 Ti's. By no means do I think you should get a $2,000, you know, 3080 Ti from like a Strix or a Tough, even though those are nicely designed GPUs. I think for 3080 Ti, that's getting near 3090 money. At that point, you might as well just get a 3090. Now, $1,400 does make a little bit more sense to stay within that realm of the 3080 Ti. Of course, now you also have the 3080 12 gigabyte model, which performs very close to a 3080 Ti, has the same amount of VRAM, very similar GPUs, and they're going to be similarly priced. I just saw an Asus uh, Tough for $1,500. You know, that's the sort of the price, the MSRP in the store. Now, should you get the 3080 instead of the TI version? Well, I think since they're so closely matched, if you're getting a savings of four to $500, certainly it makes a lot of sense. If you start to compare, you know, the regular 3080 12 gigabyte that are maybe $1,300 against a better price 3080 Ti that might be $1,400, then it's still kind of a crapshoot. Depends which one you find first. If it's a small difference, might as well go for the 3080 Ti as that technically is going to be the better GPU. But if the difference starts to stretch beyond $150, maybe $200, I would say certainly not worth it to try to get a 3080 Ti. The 3080 12 gigabyte has that headroom now of the extra VRAM. So it's going to be more than capable to really take on any game that you want. And the traditional rasterization and ray tracing performance is going to be very similar between that and a 3080 Ti. So that's likely your best bang for the buck if you happen to find a good model that's not overpriced compared to even most of the 3080 Ti's and especially against the 3090, but that might be around the sweet spot. The 3080 has been one of the most in-demand GPUs, so no surprise that the 12 gigabyte model really is no exception, except for the fact that it's literally almost twice the price. So a very sneaky little you know MSRP increase there by Nvidia, but what are you gonna do? It's the current market. You either buy it or you just keep using what you have currently. So now let's talk about some more AMD. There are going to be more AMD GPUs in stock. In fact, my local micro center, and I think a lot of micro centers across the country, have removed the restriction on buying GPUs. For example, on NVIDIA, you only get to buy one every single 30 days. With AMD, the restriction is limited. You're still limited, I guess, one per visit or one per day, but you can reserve them online. You can even reserve open box ones. So it's starting to open up more. Before the GPU crisis was such that everything was sort of on lockdown and you had to just get one every single month. But now that sort of the shortage got a little bit better, I think because crypto dropped a little bit, you will be seeing these GPUs more available, especially the AMD ones. And the key factor is they're not selling because they're so highly priced for the most part. If you find a 6900 XT for $2,000, that is not good at all. Even though it's twice its MSRP, and you can argue some NVIDIA cards are twice their MSRP, NVIDIA GPUs are completely different in terms of their value proposition. They appeal to a much wider audience. For example, they're generally going to be better at cryptocurrency mining, depending on, on the coin, of course, for the price that they offer. And historically, they've been the favorite of gamers as AMD starts to catch up. That's going to change. But for now, people certainly still prefer NVIDIA. So 
AMD, you will see 6600 and 6600 XT. Now, these are going to be much better than the 6500 XT, and they do seem to be fairly readily available, not only in local stores, but if you check online sellers like B&H and, you know, Newegg, you will find 6600 and 6600 XTs actually in stock. Their price is certainly a little bit elevated. It's nowhere closer to that $300 range like they really should be, but you're going to end up paying anywhere from four to six hundred dollars or even a little bit more for some of these gpus these really do seem to be the more reasonable entry level gpus even though that sounds really wrong to say because you're buying a six hundred dollar entry level gpu that used to be sort of the super high end just a couple of years ago so pretty crazy that that's flipped so drastically but look at the ceiling for gpus now you go well over two thousand dollars with the 3090s so five or six hundred dollars really is sort of that entry point into serious level with GPUs. Anything below that, like the 6500 XT, just doesn't seem to be very worth it at all. Aside from the 6600 XT, the 6700 XT is one that you'll find in stock, but if you should buy it or not, a little bit questionable. Almost all of the ones that I see in stock, and they certainly are readily available, they're going to be in that $900 mark, which is really really high i mean that's almost the price that the 6900 xt should have been so certainly a little bit high for the performance that you're getting at that point i'm not sure if it's better to just look for a 3070 or something like that where you're going to get probably a better long-term gpu than the 6700 xt but if you can find one for cheaper i've seen a few open box 6700 xts go for like that 700 dollars range then it may be something worth entertaining if you really can't find any other NVIDIA GPU at all at that price range. Higher in the RX 6000 series GPUs from AMD, the market pretty much has said that anything over like 1100, people don't wanna buy unless it's a 6900 XT. Those seem to be ranging from 1300 to 15, 1600 for the more reasonable ones. And I actually think that might be a pretty good buy for a 6900 XT. You're getting almost a 3090 level GPU, aside of course from the mining performance and from the ray tracing performance performance but in general in gaming it's a fantastic gpu and at least it's not marked up nearly as drastically as the other nvidia gpus are for the performance that you're getting 6800 xt is very close in performance to a 6900 xt in most cases but unfortunately it's also very close in price so at that point might make more sense to actually jump over to the 6900 xt 6800 different class of gpu not quite like the 6800 xt and they seem to be priced very high for the most part around that like $1,200 range. I have seen some for closer to 1,000. So if you get something in that range under 1,000, that's where that GPU starts to get a little bit more interesting and it competes with the 3070. But anything over 1,000, I think it's gonna be a little bit too much for a GPU like that, which really had an original MSRP in that mid 500 range. I believe it was like 579. So, so definitely a big difference from that original price. Unfortunately, within that 900 to 1,300 price bracket, there exists exists a ton of great GPUs, even though they're very expensive. Those GPUs are competing with the likes of, you know, 3070 Ti, 3080, even almost a 3080 Ti if you get like the Founders Edition or something like that. So that's really big competition. I think the AMD ones that stand out within this price segment, 6900 XT if you can get it low enough, and possibly a 6800 XT, but those are a little bit overpriced, I believe, at this point as well. All right, guys, so let me know what you think. Just looking at some GPUs here, thinking of what's worth it in this market or not if you have to buy something. It goes without saying, nothing feels like it's really worth it because the prices are insanely high but people don't have a choice these are basically the new prices going forward i really don't think they're going to go down anytime soon even when the shortage improves a little bit they're probably going to stay as high or just a little bit lower than they are now but, but for the most part we don't really expect prices to change that much at all remember to subscribe smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video